What's up folks, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video uh, and welcome back to Colo Craft Bushcraft or if you're new here, thank you very, very much for checking out the video on the channel. It's really, really great to have you here. My name's Alex and this channel is all about learning and developing bushcraft skills. Uh, with that in mind, today actually uh, marks the start of a new playlist that I'm going to start doing. When I started this channel back in December last year, my plan had always been to attend face-to-face -face bushcraft courses, take the skills that they teach me, uh, bring them back, practice them in the field, film myself doing it and show my progression that way. Uh, of course, all the COVID stuff that's going on at the moment, that, that just isn't possible. All the courses have been cancelled, postponed uh, or whatever, so I've had to find a different way uh, of achieving the same thing. So what I have done is I have, last week, I enrolled on Paul Kirtley's online bushcraft course. I think it's called Frontier Bushcraft. I think that's the company that he runs. Uh, and I'll leave a link to the, uh, to the website down in the description below, because if you like the stuff, it's really worth checking out. Uh, Paul Kirtley is a really, really well-renowned bushcrafter. He's been teaching it for years and years, and he's a really, really good guy to learn from. So, uh, what I thought I would do is, rather than doing the face-to-face -face stuff, which I actually, to be fair, do still plan to do at some point, but for now, um, you go through the online content, go through the course online, uh, and, and film myself practicing the, the skills that he teaches and, and show my progression that way. So, effectively the same thing, but online rather than face-to-face. Uh, but the first module that he talks about is all about um, cutting tools. It's all about knives, axes, saws, machetes, parangs, stuff like that. Uh, most of it, uh, or at least most of the start of it, is around safety, um, which, you know, to be fair, most of it is common sense, but there were uh, a few little tricks in there that I hadn't thought about to keep myself safe, so that was really cool. Uh, but the section that I'm going to start with and the section that I'm going to start practicing today uh, is sharpening knives. So sharpening knives is something that I have struggled with quite a lot. Uh, it's something that has frustrated me a fair bit. I've never really been able to get a good shaving edge on any of the knives that I own. Um, and actually having a, a knife that isn't as sharp as it could be is actually quite dangerous. You end up putting more power into your cuts and stuff like that. You're more likely to slip because it doesn't bite properly and, and you know you could end up hurting yourself. Um, so what I thought I would do today is uh, use the stuff that he has taught me or I'll use the, the content that he's put on to try and put a shaving edge on all of the knives that I own. So, uh, so that's mine for today. I hope you enjoy it. I'll get set up and then I'll show you what I've got. So when I was first getting into bushcraft and getting and looking at sort of how to sharpen a knife properly, um, loads and loads of bushcrafters that I saw on YouTube were using something called a Fall Niven DC4, uh, which I have here, which is really cool, it's really small, it's really light, it's got two sides to it, it's got its diamond side there and a ceramic side there, uh, and it's, uh, it's a really great piece of kit. Uh, but I have discovered uh, recently, or I think, I think I knew this before, the penny didn't quite drop, but this is more of a field sharpening stone. So it's not something particularly to put the edge on your knife to start with. It's more one to kind of um, hone it and maintain it and get out any uh, imperfections, if you like, while you're in the field. Uh, but to actually put the, the, a good shaving edge on your blade to start with, um, it's much better to use a bench stone. Um, this is what Paul Kirtley was doing, uh, so that's what I've done. Um, I didn't have one previously. Uh, there are different types you can get. You can get oil stones or you can get sort of uh, water stones. Uh, Japanese water stones, are, I think, are apparently the best. Um, but to be, you know, to be honest, I, I can't afford to invest in any of them at the moment. And until I get the technique right, anyway, uh, you know, I didn't really see the point. So uh, I just went on uh, on a good old Amazon and bought this, uh, which is a, a relatively cheap um, combination stone that came with some oil, and it's got this angling tool as well, which uh, I'm not going to use today because I think it's for chisels more than anything else. But um, anyway, beside the point. So I'm going to have a go at uh, using this. So the knives that I'm going to be attempting to sharpen uh, are my Mora Bushcraft Black. So this is the first kind of proper bushcraft knife that I bought. Uh, I really like it and uh, I'm going to attempt to do this one first, namely because if I muck up the technique too much, this is kind of the, the least expensive knife that I have. So, um, you know, it doesn't really matter if I, if I ruin it. I don't think I will, but just on the off chance, I'm going to do that one first. Uh, the next one I have is my uh, TBS Mark II Born Bushcraft Knife. Uh, which I do really like. Um, it's uh, it's got a bit more weight to it than the Mora, um, and I, I do actually like it. But when I put out on Instagram um, a couple of days ago, um, I put up a, a post asking for some advice when it comes to sharpening because I really didn't know what I was doing, uh, and I got a, a message saying that um, actually part of the problem might be the fact that the the Boar Bushcraft knife isn't uh, a particularly great knife and that there were lots of other ones around for a similar kind of price that were a lot better. Now, I don't know if that's true, um, but as I really like this stuff and as I, as I really like knives, I have bought another one anyway. 
um, which I'll show you guys as soon as it arrives. It should arrive today or tomorrow, I'm hoping. But anyway, that's beside the point. So I'm still gonna try and put a, a good edge on that one. And the last one that I have uh, is, is this. Now this, I have to be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea who made it. Uh, uh, oh no, hang on, Wright, Wrighton Heffield? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, the point with this one is that my father bought this for me when I was 12 or 13. Uh, I think this is the proper, the first sort of knife that I owned, if you like. Uh, so it has a lot of sentimental value to me. Uh, and I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but I have uh, unfortunately neglected it a little bit. So there's a fair bit of rust and stuff on the blade. Um, so I really want to clean this up and, and restore it to its uh, former glory and where it, uh, where it should be. So this uh, actually has a different uh, blade grind to the other two. The other two are Scandinavian grinds. This one is, I don't think is, I'm not entirely sure what this is. It might be a flat grind, it might be a, a convex grind. I'm not entirely certain. So the technique that I use to sharpen this one uh, will be a little bit different, um, but I'm just gonna have a go with that later on. So yeah, I think the only other thing then to do is to get all my stuff opened up and set up, uh, and then I will show you a little bit of the technique. All right, I've covered my table in plastic bags and this um, this cloth, just because I don't know how messy this is likely to be. But anyway, um, so the thing with our combination stone is just like any other, it's got two different grinds to it. It's got a coarse grind on here, which we use first, because that will shave off more metal from the blade. And then we have a finer side to uh, to refine the, the, the edge, on, of course, uh, once we're done. So just to give you guys a little bit of context, what I actually want to be able to do with my knife is, um, is cut paper just if I was to do that across the paper, it should just slice the paper really, really easily. Um, so I just want to do like a kind of before shot to show you uh, how sharp my knife is right now. So what I should be able to do, so you can see it's not actually as, as blunt as I thought it was, uh, which I'm actually quite impressed by. So let's just go over here. It's actually quite sharp. I'm actually really impressed with that. I didn't think it was this sharp. That's not too bad at all, but you see, it does stop eventually, uh, which I don't want. It really should go all the way through. So that's the, the Mora. I'll just show you the TBS. So you can see, particularly with the TBS, again, it's not as sharp as it could be. It does cut, it does cut paper, but see what I mean? It should just be biting in way more easily and just cutting straight through. So my knives are not sharp at the moment, nowhere near as sharp as I need them to be. Um, let's just do it with the, with the dad knife as well, just on the off chance. Yeah, you can see that's not, that's not, that's barely doing anything at all. So my knives are nowhere near shaving sharp. Um, so this is a very, very good thing to do. Right, let's get on with it. <clears throat> so as I said before, we're gonna start with the Mora uh, and try and work on our technique. So, first thing to do is put some oil on the stone. I'm not sure how much we need, so I'll just do, well, it's probably a bit much. It's probably way too much, but who knows. The idea with the oil, I believe, is that um, it acts as a lubricant to help you when you're shaving metal off the, uh, off the blade. Now, the technique that I have been taught is to put the blade onto the stone and then rock it up so that the bevel, hopefully you can see this, the bevel is the bit that kind of goes in on the middle of the blade there, uh, so that the bevel rests on the block itself and then putting, applying pressure to the back of the knife, we push forward, across, and then come up at the end. Now this is slipping slightly, I think that's probably because of the angle that I'm at. And we do this six to eight times. Yeah, I'm gonna to need to change this because the bags underneath, unfortunately, are slipping too much. So let's safety first, let's put the knife away. Let's see if we can get away with just the cloth, shall we? Go away, bags. I feel a bit more stable, kind of. All right. So finding the root again, pressure, that's slightly better. It's still sliding a bit.
yeah, I'm really going to struggle with this, aren't I, with a cloth underneath. That is a shame. All right. Anybody been counting how many I've done? Because I certainly haven't. So once you've done six or eight in that direction, you need to come back and do it the other way, because obviously you need to make sure that you are um, taking as much off one side of the blade as you are the other. So it's exactly the same thing. Place the blade um, flat on the stone and then lift it up a bit so you get the right angle with the bevel. Uh, and then you put pressure on the back of the blade and bring it towards yourself. And then as you come towards the end, make sure you lift up so that you get this bit of the blade as well. Uh, this is really frustrating with this. Yeah, I'm going to need to change this, aren't I? Anyway, that's the basic technique. So I'm going to find a way to secure this a bit better so it doesn't slip around a bit, uh, slip around a bit, slip around at all, so I can actually get some proper pressure down. Uh, and the other thing actually is that Paul was doing this for a good hour, which obviously I'm not going to show um, you guys uh, because, well, that'd be incredibly boring. But basically he spends a lot of time doing uh, six or eight that way, six or eight this way, uh, has a little feel. And when you can feel a bevel, which is basically, um, or you can feel a burr, sorry, a burr, not a bevel. When you can feel a burr on the blade, um, you then stop doing multiple strokes one way and multiple strokes the other way and alternate it. So uh, so I'm just going to get on with that. And once you've done that for, uh, for quite a while, you then switch to the, the finer side. So uh, as I said, I won't make you watch it showing you the basic technique. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a film on that I've seen a million times so I don't need to pay too much attention to it uh, and then uh, get on with sharpening my knife. Um, I'll get back with you um, when I flip sides to say the fine side and of course I will show you the end uh, to see uh, how sharp we can get it. Once you've done all of this on the stone, by the way, you then need to strop your blade uh, using something like this. So this is my strop, which is leather that has a polishing compound on it as opposed to with when you're using the stone and you're going against the stone, you're trying to actually sort of shave bits off the stone, like that, what you do with the strop is you actually then go the other way. And you need to do that 50 to 100 times, uh, either 50 on each side uh, or 100 times going backwards and forwards. So you do that in alternating strokes, uh, again, making sure that you lift up at the end to make sure you get all of the blade. But anyway, as I said, I'll get back to that um, once, that's, uh, once it's time to do it. So I will check back in with you guys in a little bit. So I've currently spent about 40 minutes on the coarse side of the stone and as you can see Hopefully, it looks like there's a real difference in the blade in that the bevel here has had a lot of the black paint scraped away and it, uh, it's starting to look rather nice and shiny. You can see actually towards the end here where I haven't done it particularly evenly because there's still some black paint left and the same here on the other side. Um, I've tried getting this out uh, with um, the way that I've been sharpening uh, but I seem to be failing slightly so I'm not entirely sure what to do. So what I think I'll do is turn the stone over, get onto the fine grain um, because I think we're starting to get there, it is starting to catch, which is really cool. Um, we'll get onto the fine grain and do ex essentially exactly the same process again. Okay. <laughs> I had to put the block on my, uh, my leather notebook here uh, just to stop it moving around. But we'll get some more oil on this bad boy and do the same thing again. So we're starting off with six to eight strokes in one direction and then six to eight in the other. Uh, and then once we've been doing that for a while, we'll move to... Um, uh, to one stroke in each direction.
Cool. Okay, so I've been going for the on the fine grain for quite a while now. So what I think I'm going to do is get the strop out and start stropping my knife and see how we look at the end of it. I honestly don't know if I've made a huge amount of difference. It does feel sharper, which is good. I'm just going sort of across my thumbprint and it does feel to be biting slightly, so I think that's a good thing. And I don't really want to press it, which would indicate to me that it is sharper. So um, I'm going to carry on with the strop. Uh, hopefully I haven't ruined my leather book with all the oil that's sinking through the stone. <laughs> um, carry on with the strop. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, as opposed to uh, when you're sharpening, kind of it feels like you're almost trying to cut the uh, sharpening block. Uh, we don't do that with a strop, we in fact go the other way. So we go with it rather than against it. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to do this about 100 times um, and then we shall see where we are uh, afterwards. Hopefully by then I can take that piece of paper and this knife will shave it. So uh, I'll get on with the stropping uh, and I'll get back to you again in a, in a little bit. Stay still. I think I'm just about done stropping. I must have done 100, 120 odd passes, I think. Um, so I think that should be enough. So shall we check out the fruits of our labors and see if our mora will now cut uh, paper more effectively than it did last time. Here we go, fingers crossed. Oh, that is nice. Oh, I'm so happy with that, that's really nice. Oh, it's so much better than it was last time. Cuts really, really smoothly. It's going straight through. Oh, that was me. Look at that. Really, really happy. So my technique seems to have worked. Um, I don't think it's quite as smooth and quite as finished and polished as, as it could be. Uh, for that, I think I need sort of finer grained, um, uh, finer grained bench stones to go along with it. But you know what? We'll get there eventually. One day I'll... Uh, I'll invest in some Japanese water stones and get the uh, sharpest knives known to man. Uh, but anyway, so the only thing left to do now is do the, the rest of my knives and cutting tools, which I, I won't make you watch, um, namely because it'll be exactly the same thing again. But uh, I'm really happy that this uh, particular uh, practice, if you like, has gone to plan uh, and I now have a, a really nice sharp uh, Mora. So the, as I say, the only thing left to do is do with the other ones. So, uh, so I'm going to end this video here, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of this stuff, if you want to see me practicing the rest of the uh, the bush, bushcraft modules, uh, the next one I believe is on um, it's on fire, particularly friction fire and stuff like that, which is something I have no experience in, but I'm really, really looking forward to trying. So if you want to see that, guys, make sure you hit subscribe, uh, press the bell button to stay notified, and I'll see you very soon. Take care.